Oh, hello. I um, made a little demonstration set up here of the concept of osmotic pressure. Let me tell you what uh, I've gone ahead and put together here. Here's a tall beaker of uh, deionized water and a uh, hollow glass tube going up, what, maybe about three, three and a half feet of tubing there. And then at the top, it has a latex tube coming down into this little test tube. Inside the beaker, deionized water, I uh, took a strip of dialysis tubing. And dialysis tubing is rather special because it's plastic. And I go ahead and tie off the bottom. And I tied the top around this glass tube so that whatever's inside the dialysis tubing is open all the way to the system. So if I wanted to, I can go ahead and blow into this latex tube, and that would fill up the dialysis bag. In other words, this is all open. But the dialysis bag here, which is tied off latex tubing, is really rather special because that tubing that's inside there has tiny little pores inside. So it's like filter paper made out of plastic. So in dialysis, when they filter blood, the blood is sent through this tubing, and it filters, takes out the contaminants. Now those pores are very, very small so that water molecules can travel back and forth. But larger molecules cannot, so it's like filter paper. Larger molecules are stuck. Now, what I did inside the bag was, instead of blowing air inside, I filled it up with water, some blue food coloring so that you could see it, and a um, pretty concentrated amount of sugar. So it's a pretty saturated solution of sugar, sucrose, table sugar. Now, the idea on osmotic pressure is that water molecules follow back and forth through the latex bag. Again, the pores are large enough that water molecules could go from the outside, whatever's inside the beaker, into the inside, inside the bag, and back again. Now, water loves to dissolve things, including sugar molecules with these polar groups sticking off of them. So water travels inside to the bag trying to dissolve the sugar. Now, some water will travel outside because we have an equilibrium, but more water will travel in at the beginning than will leave, and that's causing pressure. The bag if you will, like inflates, more water goes inside. Well, the bag's not really allowed to inflate because it's open. So what happens is this solution is pushed up and over, and there's a little bit of the blue solution here, and drop-wise, it just keeps drop, drop, and there's a drop forming at the top of the latex tube right now. So over time, and this has been set up for maybe about two hours, over time, more water enters and pushes the solution over the top, osmotic pressure. We have an equation for osmotic pressure. It's over here on this right board. This equation will look very, very familiar to you. Forget about this pi business and substitute it with a P, and you'll see PV equals nRT, the ideal gas law or the equation of state. Well, this also works for osmotic pressure. Now, the osmotic pressure people somehow, I guess, must have been offended at using P because that was used in gases. So they came up with using pi. So we have pi V equals nRT. I posed a problem up here on the top board. On the top board, a little word problem here says that a student goes ahead and dissolves some polymer, some of these large macromolecules, into water. Now I have a picture here that's very, very similar to the osmotic pressure situation that I set up a couple of hours ago and just showed you. But instead of having a latex bag, what I did was set up this picture up on the board as though it's a tub. And in fact, we call it the tub. And it's a stainless steel container. And the latex tube is not really tubing. It's more like a sheet. And I made it with dots here so that you could see that water travels back and forth. So water's allowed to travel in both directions through the pores, the filter paper that's really made out of plastic. Now, this could be bolted down with a lid, put the lid on top, seal it so it becomes sealed to the air on the outside, and pressure is allowed to build up. Now, the water level at the beginning is filled. I could even fill it on one side, and then shortly the water level on the other side will reach because the water is free to travel back and forth. But what the student did was filled it up with water, left it for a couple of hours so that it would equilibrate, reach a constant temperature with the room. And then she went ahead and put a polymer into this side and then bolted this down. Well, by having the polymer in on the left side, the water travels more from the right to the left trying to dissolve the polymer. So the water level on the left side actually increases. And that was shown with the osmotic pressure device just a few minutes ago. Poof, the water's pushed over the edge on that device. And the water level on the right side actually decreases. 
So there is more water on this side than on this side because the water tries to go ahead and dissolve the polymer. That's going to result in an increase of pressure over here. So I have marked here T for temperature, a thermometer coming in here, and a pressure gauge, and some data up on top. This is pretty much a one afternoon reaction. Student sets it up for a couple of hours, drops in the polymer, lets it dissolve, leaves it for a few more hours, comes back, takes the temperature pressure measurements, makes a calculation, and they can determine the molecular weight of this polymer. So the problem reads that the student dissolves 12 grams of polymer in a little less than one liter of water at 320 Kelvin. This has a heating element underneath, so she heated it up to maybe about, oh, let's call it 40 centigrade, like warm water helping to dissolve the polymer and then comes back a few hours later and measures the pressure. Now the osmotic pressure isn't all that great here. These units are millimeters of mercury. We'll convert that to atmosphere in a moment. And we're asked what's the molar mass of the uh, polymer. So I showed my work. We're going to use the ideal osmotic pressure equation. Pi V is equal to nRT. Rearrange for amount n number of moles. So this is the pressure in millimeters of mercury divide by 760 millimeters of mercury per atmosphere. The volume, and I took the liberty here of changing 800 mils into 0.8 liters. Ideal gas law constant and the temperature in Kelvin, and we come up with a very small number of moles. That's okay. The molar mass is quite large on these polymers. The student weighed out grams and measured the moles using this apparatus. 12 grams divided by 2.71 times 10 to the negative 6 moles and we come up with a molar mass of 4 million grams per mole, 4.42 times 10 to the sixth. So a very powerful technique, uh, does not require a computer interface, nothing very sophisticated. I think the most uh, sophisticated device up here you might consider to be the uh, pressure gauge, which is very similar to one used on your bike tires, but a little bit more sensitive. That's osmotic pressure.